Okay. In today's video, we're going to look at adding and subtracting rational expressions. Some things to keep in mind right off the bat. Uh, we put in here some principles that rational expressions are analogous to fractions. They're just fractions that happen to have some variables in them made up of polynomials. And that adding and subtracting fractions requires a common denominator, and so does adding and subtracting rational expressions. So some tips along the way, we want to try to break any polynomials that we see up into as small a parts as we can by factoring and make sure that we look out for greatest common factors, try to make the pieces smaller if we can. So in our first example here where we're adding these two uh, rational expressions together, here in example one, um, I'm going to look and I see that my denominators are both quadratic, so I'm going to try to factor those and break them into smaller pieces so I can see what the parts of my denominator actually need to be. I notice that these are even numbers here, so I could take out a greatest common factor. So I'm going to do some work here on trying to factor this. And then I can try to break up the x squared plus 2x minus 3. So that would be an x and an x there. I need a 3 and a 1. These are supposed to add up to a positive 2x there. That's a 3x. This is a 1x. If I make that minus, then everything works the way that it's supposed to. So my first denominator becomes a 2 times an x plus 3 times an x minus 1. And I'm going to just kind of shrink this work here a little bit and get it out of my way. Try to get it separated from grab too many things at once. So we get that up and out of the way and we will take a look at our other one. So our other one here, no greatest common factor coming out of that, but we will try to factor that. I get the x squared there, the 4. These have to add up to a minus 5x, an x and x, a 4, a 1, gives me a 4x and a 1x, and as long as those were both negative, then they will add up to negative 5x. So my denominator on the other side, I need just a little bit more space left there, so leave a little space. And that's going to be an x minus 1 and an x minus 4. Okay, let's clean that work up a little bit, didn't need to do that. All right, so looking at this now, I want to look at what I have in common between the denominators. My denominator is going to have to have everything that was in the first one. So I'm going to need the 2. I'm going to need an x plus 3. I'm going to need an x minus 1. This has got 1x minus 1. I've already got that accounted for over here. But uh, so already have that one. But I'm going to need an x minus 4. So this first one doesn't have an x minus 4, so I'm going to include an x minus 4 in here, which I can only do if I put an x minus 4 in the numerator as well. Already existing in the numerator of that one was a 2x plus 1, which I'll now put in parentheses there. On my other one, I noticed that it was going to need the 2, and the x plus 3 from over here. So those don't exist in this denominator yet, so put a 2 there and an x plus 3 there, which I can only do if I put an x plus 3 here and a 2 here, so the 2 over 2 is 1, x plus 3 over x plus 3 is 1, as long as x isn't negative 3. And I also had an x, that was coming in there from before. I should probably put that x in in green because it was this one from the one that I underlined in green there. So let's try to put some of these things together. We'll clean this up a little bit. I've got a 2x plus 1 and an x minus 4 plus a 
2 times x times x plus 3. And those are all over the same denominator, which is 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 4. I'm fine with the denominator factored. It's kind of more useful to me that way. But I am going to try to clean up the numerator a little bit in case it could possibly factor when everything gets combined together there. It doesn't look like it's going to, but I can multiply my uh, 2x plus 1 and my x minus 4 together, 2x squared plus x minus 8x minus 4. So that gives me a 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 when I multiply those first ones together and get this button out of my way. Um, and when I multiply the second ones together, that's just distributing a 2x through there. So that's a 2x squared plus 6x. And it is still all over 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 4. And when I combine things in the numerator then, I get a 4x squared uh, minus 1x minus 4 all over 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 4. Um, if I check my quadratic in the numerator here, so I'm going to check this one with the discriminant, the inverse of b or the b squared, which is going to be 1 minus 4 times a times c, I get 1 plus 64, which is 65, which is at least a real number, but it's not one that will factor since 65 doesn't have a nice square root for me. So I'm going to leave this as the final version of my answer. That is those added together. We can see from here that I should throw in that x cannot be negative 3, 1, or 4 based on our previous examples of how to do domains of rational expressions. Okay, so that is our first one. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to subtract on this one. These are a little bit more time consuming, but they're getting deeper in math, so that's the kind of thing that's going to happen. So let's start with uh, this one. We'll see if that can factor for us. So we've got the x squared and the 42. Uh, x and x, 6 and 7 gives us a 6x and a 7x, which adds up to the 13x. So that first one factors to an x plus 7 over uh, x plus 6 times x plus 7. Um, and then we're going to subtract from that on the green one. If we work on factoring that, we get um, our x squared there, our 7 there. So x and x and 7 and 1 gives us a 1x down there, 7x there. Those do add up to the 8x. So that factors into a 10 over x plus 1 times x plus 7. <clears throat> All right, so in order to get my common denominator, let me shift this over and give myself a little bit more space here again. My common denominator is definitely, well, I think I could do a little simplifying over here, but it's not going to help me at this point. So my common denominator, I'm going to need the x plus 6, the x plus 7. This already has an x plus 7, but I'm also going to need an x plus 1. So um, this one then is going to need the x plus 1, which I can throw an x plus 1 then over there. 
And this one on this side is missing the x plus 6, so I'm going to need an x plus 6 over x plus 6 there. And so now I am multiplying my numerators together. Um, in the numerators there, I'm going to get an x squared plus 8x plus 7. And over here I have a minus 10 times x plus 6. I'm going to be a little careful with that one because that subtraction is going to have to do some distributing. And that is my common denominator. And my numerator now is x squared plus 8x plus 7. That's going to give me a minus 10x minus 60 over my x plus 6, x plus 7, and x plus 1. Myself, just a little bit more space here. Combine everything in that numerator will give me an x squared minus 2x minus uh, 53 over x plus 6 times x plus 7 times x plus 1. And 53, I believe, is prime. So this should be our final answer. Make a note again of the fact that x cannot equal uh, negative 7, negative 6, or negative 1. And this should be my final answer there.